I'm going to show you seven different methods on how to join granny squares and we're going to get started right now. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you seven, that's right, seven different techniques, different methods that you can use to join granny squares and some of them are really cool. They're really different and exciting and I can't wait to share that with you. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, fun giveaways, and you're not going to want to miss out. The only things you need to join granny squares will be the crochet hook that you use to make the granny square a yarn needle or tapestry needle. Even if you're not doing a whip stitch, you're gonna need that to weave in all of your ends anyway with the project. A pair of scissors. The yarn that you want to use to join the granny squares together, whether that yarn be the same color as the granny squares themselves to create a camouflage effect, or a completely different color for a pop or dramatic effect, which is really cool too. And Honestly, you may want some stitch markers or row markers to hold the corners in place. That way your granny squares don't shift in the process of you joining them together because that's never fun. <laughs> but really, that's all you need. So once you have everything or if you want just a pad and paper and let's dive right into method number one on how to join granny squares. The first method that we are going to use is the whip stitch in one loop only. So this is the most common sewing method for joining two pieces together. We begin by looking at our granny squares here or looking at your work and identifying which side you would consider your right side and which side you would consider your wrong side. If you've never heard of this before, your right side would be considered the piece of your work or the side of your work that you want presented out to people. When it comes to certain projects though, such as the general granny square, both sides of your work look fairly identical. How you would identify the right side and wrong side of this particular project is look at the outermost stitches and you'll see here that my V stitches are more faced forward where if I turn this over, those same V stitches are now facing downward. So this side of my work would be considered the wrong side or the back of the work. Other pieces are a lot easier to identify what the front side is. If you're doing front posts and they're sticking out on one side and they're not showing on the back or the other side, or in certain granny squares, you have 3D flowers or some kind of stitch that is popping out the front, you'll know that is considered the right side and the other side of the work that does not have that 3D bump or 3D stitch detail would be considered the wrong side or the back. So you got to identify which side is the front side, which side is the back side, especially for the whip stitch because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the two front sides or right sides of the work together. In this case here, I see my V stitches and I see my V stitches. So these are both my right sides and I'm going to put them together. I want my right sides together and then the wrong side facing out, wrong side facing out. Great, the whip stitch, we are using a yarn needle tapestry needle to do our join. In this case, you're going to want to cut enough of the yarn that you are using for your join so that way it's easy to work with. You're able to get through the piece, hopefully, but not too long where you're creating a tangle mess in the process of doing your join. If you need to add more yarn to continue your join, that's just fine. Depending on what you are joining together, your granny square corner might look very different. Some granny square corners will be a chain three, some will be a chain two, and some will just be a chain one just to get you over to that work. You're going to want to find the center most piece. So if it's a chain three to get around your corner, then you're gonna look for that second or middle most chain and that's where you will begin. If it's a chain two to get around, then look for the second chain, and that will be the chain that helps you along the, this side or the top. And the first chain will be the last stitch of this side right here, okay? And if it is just one chain, 
then go in that centermost chain. And that's like the perfect chain indicator of this is the corner. <laughs> if there is no chain at all, such as maybe they're doing a fan or a shell to go around the corner, then just find the centermost stitch and go on the top of that stitch. In this case, I have a chain two. So I'm going to use the second chain. Look at the two pieces that are together and you're going to find the back loop only. So here's my two chains. So I'm using the second chain here. Here is my V-stitch and I'm gonna go in the back loop only of my V-stitch. Look at the other piece of work. Second chain here. Find the V-stitch and I'm gonna go through the front loop of this stitch which would be the back loop if I were to look at it from, from this side. Pull through leaving enough of a tail for you to weave in and clean up your ends. Tie a knot. And it doesn't have to be too tight just in case you make a mistake. You can have it tight enough but always secure it later. Take your yarn needle. Find the next stitch down, the next V. Go in the back loop. Find the next stitch down on the other side. Find the V-stitch, go through the front loop, and pull. Then you'll take the yarn and you'll bring it over to the other side. And again, you'll start on the exact same side, finding the next stitch over, back loop, adjoining stitch, front loop there, and pull. There we go. And then bring it over and repeat. Now some work, some granny squares will be identical. Like you're just working the exact same granny square stitch in every granny square. Maybe you'll change up the colors a little bit, but they're all the same exact pattern, meaning that you'll have the exact same number of stitches on each side of the work. In which case, your stitches will be a one-to-one -one ratio Every stitch will have a matching identical stitch for it on the other side, okay? There are some, or if you are working a pattern where you're using different granny squares together, that's beautiful, I love the technique, but sometimes there'll be a different number of stitches on one side of the granny square to the other side of the granny square. In which case, the easiest way to do that is to grab stitch markers. So here I would grab two stitch markers. I'd find the very first and very last stitch that I'm going to be working up for that side. So I would go here, which is the first chain of the chain two because that's the last stitch of that side. And I would put one in the first. That way it's not shifting. And then I would just make sure as I'm going along, okay, I just need to keep these two pieces in line with each other, keep them together. And then I'm just going to work these two stitches. Okay, so new stitch down, but oh, it looks like it's the same stitch on the other side that I just put a stitch in. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it in line that way it is going to stay together the way that I want it to. Because in that case, if you did try to go a one-to-one -one ratio with your stitches, your work might end up like offset like that, or you run out of room on one side or it's bunched up and it just, it just doesn't look right. So you wanna keep your work in line with each other. And hopefully your stitches are a one-to-one -one ratio where it's next stitch down, it has an adjoining, oh, that's the stitch match for it. But again, if it doesn't, just keep things in line, okay? So in this case, we are working the back loop only of both sides. Again, if I was looking over here, that would be the back loop only of my stitch. And we're just going over and back through. And then over and back through. And that is known as the whip stitch in one loop. Here's what it looks like if I were to tighten that. There's the front. 
wait, this is the front. Here's the front. This is what it would look like. And this would be the back of the work. I think this stitch would look really pretty if the yarn that you were using to join the, the two pieces of work together was the exact same color as one of the outermost colors, or preferably if both of the granny squares ended in the exact same color, you would use that same color to join them together and it would be a very, it would be a very pretty join. The second joining method that we're going to go over is the whip stitch in both loops. So again, we're going to find the front side or the right side of our granny squares or our work. Remember that to identify the front side, sometimes you have to look at the outermost stitches and see, find your V stitches. If your V stitches are facing up, that's the right side of your work. If they're facing down, you're looking at the back or the wrong side of your work. Okay, once you identify which sides are your right sides or your front sides, you want those two sides to be facing each other, revealing the wrong side or the back side of the work on both sides. The whip stitch both loops is also done with a yarn needle tapestry needle. Again, making sure you have enough yarn cut out to work the piece as best you can without being too much where you're creating tangles. All right, we're going to find the cornermost stitch and we're gonna go underneath both loops, find the cornermost stitch, find both loops. There we go. And then you would tie your knot, making sure you're leaving a long enough tail for you to weave in your end at the end of the project. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go next stitch down. If you need to separate your work to identify that, find your V stitch, go through the side of the work underneath both of those loops, all the way across to the adjoining side under both loops and pull and take the yarn go over the work find the next stitch down under both loops so go through the front underneath both loops joining stitch on the other side underneath both loops and pull then over and continue next stitch down This technique definitely moves fast and will help you get through quicker. If you're going through a chain one, I would still go under both loops. I wouldn't go under the whole work. I would just go under two loops, leaving one loop on the bottom. So you have two on the top and straight across. Okay. So, this is the wrong side. This is the back of the work. This is how the back of the work will look. I'm pulling it, I'm pulling my yarn tighter. So this is what the join will look like on the back of the work. And this is what the join will look like on the front of the work. You can see the yarn, the join, so in this case, again, I would probably pick a yarn to use that is the same color as one of the outermost colors, just so it blends better and is not such an eyesore as an opposite color or a completely different random color or just a color that is not one of these two outermost colors. That is what I would pick. And if you did that, I think the join would look really pretty and works very well. All right, and that, that looks great, works up fast, and that is the whip stitch in both loops. The next join that we're going to work is known as the single crochet join method. So we want to actually have the front sides or the right sides of our work facing outwards. So we're gonna take these two and put them together like that. So front side, outermost side, front side, outermost side, and then we're going to move them to the side and we will work them as one together. I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to work them this way, just hopefully to be a better, better visual for you. Use the crochet hook that you used 
when making your granny squares. It's just easiest that way. You don't need to go up a size or down a size unless you choose to. Okay, grab the yarn that you wanna to use to join these two pieces. Start with a tail long enough for you to weave in your end at the end. Make your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. So start in the corner most chain or stitch. We're going to find that second stitch here or that middle stitch, find the V, and insert our crochet hook in the back loop only. All right, find the adjoining piece, find the corner, find the middlemost or the stitch that you wanna use, depending on if these are identical, you're using the same stitch or if they're different. Then just find that corner stitch and you're gonna go in the front loop only, just like that. Now, why it says front loop, or I say front loop, is if I were to turn it, it would be the back loop of this, like looking at it from this way, it would be back loop and then front loop. So I basically wanna work just those two loops that are touching each other, or that would be considered back loops of both sides of the work. Yarn over, pull that yarn, through both sides. So now I have two loops on my crochet hook and then yarn over again and pull through those two loops for a single crochet stitch. Next stitch down, find the next V stitch, V, back loop only. On the other side, find the next V stitch, and go to the front loop Yarn over, pull through both. Yarn over, pull through both loops for a single crochet. And then you would just continue to work this. What I like about the single crochet join is that you can have the yarn just feeding from the skein that you're using and you just keep going. There's no having to add any additional yarn when you run out, such as you would if you were working the whip stitch. All right, let me get a little bit further in here. If you get to a chain one, just find the loop that is closest to you and work that loop. You're not going to go under all loops here. All right, let me get a little bit further and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so pull that tight so I can remove my crochet hook, pull these strings out of the way. So this is what it will look like. It has a raised join. You, you see the loops, you see the stitches, the, you see the V stitches here, which is very pretty. And that is your join looking at it from the front side. I really like this look. I think it would look very flattering if you had either the same color, used either the same color here for the join to blend it, but I also think it would look really beautiful having this color be a pop color or a different color to accentuate the joining of these two granny squares. Here's what the back looks like. It's also a very beautiful join here, either in a, a different color or the same color used for one of the outermost colors of the granny square. It's very pretty, very clean. So even if you liked this join look better than the V stitches here, all you would have to do to achieve this look is instead of having the right side facing outward, you'd flip this and have the wrong sides facing outward. And then the side that would be presented out to people would look like this join. The fourth method that we're going to use to join granny squares or join pieces together is known as the reverse single crochet stitch. It's a little more tricky, but the appearance looks like a braided cord, which is really pretty and a really cool effect to the join itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the crochet hook that we used to make our granny squares. Not gonna change that up unless you choose to. Find the color of yarn that you would like to use. Start with a tail long enough for you to weave in your ends. Create a slip knot and attach your crochet hook. Now in this case, the braided cord look will be the look that you want facing out to people. So you're going to want that on the right side of your blanket. So finding the right side of your granny square, 
we're going to keep those on the outside of this join and the wrong sides of the work will be the sides that are facing each other. Okay, we're going to actually begin in the opposite corner than you would start and we're going to work backwards. I know it's weird, but it's called the reverse single crochet stitch. So finding the cornermost stitch, we're going to actually work in the back loops only. So finding the back loop of that V stitch, finding the corner, this is the corner stitch I'm using, V. I'm going to use the front loop of that side. So the two loops touching each other are now going to be joined. Okay, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to go backwards. So finding the stitch, the V stitch that's behind us, we're going to go into the back loop only. Finding the next stitch down, front loop only there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. All right, let's keep going so you can actually see the effect. I'm going to take this little tail, I'm going to tuck that tail out of the way. Okay, so finding the next loop. Enter into that loop, back loop only, next V stitch, front loop, yarn over, pull through both of those sides, leaving you two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Let me get a little further down and then you'll see what it looks like. So next V stitch, back loop only, looking at the back front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Now this method does take a little bit longer because it feels a little awkward. It feels a little weird going backwards, reverse. So take your time with this one until you can get the feel for it and then you can move a little bit faster. You are purely doing this technique for that cord look, to achieve that cord look, which does look really cool. Right. Pull through, yarn over, pull through. Okay, so I'm gonna remove my crochet hook so you can see what's going on here. So this is the look, that cord look. Pull these pieces apart so you can really see. And you can see with this cord look, how depending on the granny squares that you created, and this, this could look really pretty. This could be very defining for these granny square pieces. Absolutely. I love this cord look. It's very, very neat, very different. I, I think this would look really great if it was the same color kind of camouflaging with the granny squares themselves, but yet that cord look would still have a very beautiful definition. Also, I think that if you used this as a pop color, power color, or just stick out join color for your granny squares, that could look really cool too. Here's what it looks like on the back. It looks very up and down, up and down join, which also looks very clean. So if you like this look, you can always use this on the front of your work as well. The fifth join method that we're going to go over is known as the slip stitch on the front side of the work. This stitch is very pretty. It's an attractive chain stitch that you will see on the front side of your work. So we begin by identifying the front sides of our granny squares. 
that's going to stay facing upward. Grab the yarn that you choose to join these two pieces together. Start with a tail long enough for you to weave in your ends. Create a slip knot, attach your crochet hook. We're ready to begin. So finding the corner, we're going to work the back loops only. So in this corner chain, I'm gonna go in the back loop only. Adjoining corner chain, the back loop only of that chain. Going to yarn over, pull through both sides, and also pull through the loop on our crochet hook. We want the yarn that is attached to our skein to kind of remain in the back of the work. So also, let's move that tail. <laughs> okay, so next stitch, back loop only. Next stitch, the back loop only. Yarn over, pull through one. You might have to swivel your hook, your claw, in order to get through those sides. And then pull that loop through the loop that's on your crochet hook. You just wanna keep one loop on your crochet hook. Okay, so next stitch, back loop, keep that yarn behind the work. Next stitch here, back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then I will kind of like rotate or turn my crochet hook to get through, get through, and through. Back loop, Back loop, yarn over, pull through, pull through, pull through. Okay, let me get further down so that way you can really see what's going on here. Now, you might be noticing that as I'm going along, I'm going from top down into the stitch here. And instead of going from the top down into the stitch here, I'm going underneath it and through the loop that way. Then yarning over, pulling through, pulling through, pulling through. The reason I'm doing that is I'm basically working this as if I had sandwiched these two pieces together and then how this will work if you want that yarn there is it'll be back loop like that that's basically how i am working those stitches together and then yarn over pull through all keeping that yarn behind go okay so let's see what this looks like this is what the join will end up looking like so this would be the front of your work and you can absolutely see those clear V stitches. They lay flat opposed to the single crochet join where it was, it did stick out. It was more pronounced. This lays flat against the work. This would look beautiful in either the same color as a camouflage color join, or again, it would look great as an outside color or a pop of color if I were to use maybe this charcoal gray on the outside, it would really pop and create a very defining line, defining join between these two granny squares. The back looks like this, and this line is very straight this direction. 
It doesn't go side to side so much. It's more of a straight line this way. So if you find this attractive or really like that look, you could absolutely use the same color as one of these outermost colors or in a, a pop of color like this charcoal and that would look really clean as well. So that is known as the slip stitch on the front side of the work. The sixth joining method for joining granny squares is called slip stitch on the back side and I actually favor this stitch a lot if you are wanting a join that is invisible. So finding the front sides, I'm gonna flip those over so we are looking at the back sides of the work or the wrong side. And then you're going to join those together. So in the middle, you got the two front sides facing each other and on the outside, you have the backs or the wrong sides facing outward. Taking the yarn that you would like to use to join these two granny squares, starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project, creating our slip knot, touching our crochet hook. Okay, finding the cornermost stitch, but this time we're working in the front loops. I know it's different. It's going to feel a little different, but once you get used to it, it'll work up quickly. So front loop, front loop, or the outermost loop, outermost loop, yarn over, pull the yarn all the way through, and then slip stitch. Okay, next stitch over. I like to use my claw a lot here. So underneath the front loop, go to the other side, finding the V-stitch. Gonna go underneath that loop. So the two loops that are touching or closest to each other are going to be left behind. We're not touching those loops. Yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through and all the way through the loop on our crochet hook. Front loop. Even on those chain ones, I'm only going underneath that one loop. And eventually you will get the hang of it and start picking up some speed. All right, so removing my crochet hook. So this is what work will look like on the back side, the wrong side, because again, these are the two wrong sides of our work. You've got those V stitches that were created right there and the other side. So that's what it will look like on the wrong side, but check out what happens when I flip it to look at the right side. this a little bit tighter. What you see here is no join. If I were to spread these out, you would see the join. But if I were to relax it, it literally looks like my granny square is right next to the other granny square. That's what it looks like. It's hard to kind of see it in there. See? You don't see the join at all. It's so neat. They're connected, see, they're connected, but the way that they're connected, you don't see any join at all. It just literally looks like the granny square is butted right next to the other granny square. And that is known as the slip stitch on backside.
The last join method that I'm going to go over, the seventh join method, is known as slip stitch and chain. Now, to be honest, when I first saw this particular join method, it blew my mind because it reminded me that there's never a set way of doing things. You can absolutely think out of the box. You can absolutely just take things to a whole other level, and we forget to do that sometimes. And when I saw this, it... It really inspired me and I hope it inspires you too if you have not seen this technique before. So you find the side of the work, the right side of the work, and you're going to take your crochet hook, take your yarn, the yarn of choice that you want to use, begin with a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends, create a slip knot and attach your crochet hook. Okay, so I'm gonna work this way with the yarn or with the granny squares being one on top of each other opposed to this direction. So I'm going to go this way. I'm going to take the first granny square or piece of work, find the cornermost piece, and you're going to work underneath both loops. If you're working in a chain, feel free to just work underneath the whole thing to make it easier on you to begin. If you are working the chain within the side, then you would want to work underneath both loops and not or, or two loops and not underneath the whole work. So just slip stitch. That's all we want to do there. Find the other side of the work. We're going to chain either two or chain three. It's totally up to you. Chain more if you want. But I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to find the cornermost stitch on this side. And it's easier for me to go underneath two loops with, with the yarn that I used here. So just under two loops and then slip stitch. All right, and then chain two, one, two, or chain three if you chain three here. Skip either one or skip two. If you chain two, I would skip just one stitch. If you chain three, I would skip two stitches. And then slip stitch underneath two loops, both loops of the next stitch. Then chain two, one, two. Skip a stitch, slip stitch both loops of the next stitch. Slip stitch. Chain two, one, two. Skip a stitch. This is a chain one, but I'm still going to go under two loops. One loop on the bottom, two loops on the top, and slip stitch. Chain two. One, two. Move tail. All right, skipping the next stitch, slip stitch, both loops of the next stitch. Let me work that a little bit so you can see. So one, two chains, skipping the next stitch, slip stitch in the following stitch. One, two, skipping the next stitch, slip stitch in the following. Now if you want to, you could even just work these two pieces side by side one, two, skip, slip stitch. One, two, okay, looking at the other side, skip, slip stitch. One, two, skip, slip stitch. One, two, skip, slip stitch. However that looks best, works best, feels best for you, do that. All right, so moving my crochet hook, and now we're going to look at this. And I'm going to actually remove my mat underneath so you can identify or see it a little bit better. I've got like a dark wood color underneath here. But then if you do this method, the join creates this like V-stitch kind of look between your two granny squares. 
and it is very, very cool. And so your join has more personality, it has more detail, more characteristic. And again, it's one of those areas where you can play and either use the same exact color as one of these outermost stitches, or you can use a completely different color and have this be very detailed, very bold, very defining for your granny squares. And it just creates even more to the whole project. It makes it look more complicated, complex. So that is the slip stitch and chain. Okay, here I wanted to show you what you do when, once you have reached the end of the granny square that you are working. So you find the last cornermost stitch of that side. Right now I am just working the single crochet join method. It's just an easier method, but you would use this exact same technique for every single method that I showed you today. You find the next two granny squares that you want to join to this particular panel. You find that cornermost stitch and you work in that one depending on which stitch you are working. Find that cornermost stitch on the other granny square. Work in that one. Pull that yarn tight and then continue on and then you just continue working the same exact join method on these two granny squares or these two sections you are joining and you continue on. And what that will end up looking like is, let me get a little bit further here, it'll end up looking like this. So you just continued right on. In this case, with this being the single crochet join. So this is what you'll look like. Now, some people struggle when it comes to this part and they wonder, oh gosh, what do I do to get over this when joining these two sections? Well, let me go ahead and show you how to do that now. Okay, so we've worked this whole join together, joining these two panels together. We're coming up to this join. What we do is we will join those last two stitches on this side of the work. So joining those last two stitches. We will chain one to hop over this join and then find the very next stitches for that corner stitch that have not been touched yet and start working the join there. All right. I like to add that chain one to hop over the join to help provide some room here. Let me get a little bit further so it makes sense. Lay that flat. There we go. Awesome. So I like to add that chain one to hop over this join right here because if you don't, then I've noticed that these two will scrunch together and it doesn't lay flat like I would like. If you don't want to add that chain one, then don't go for it. Do whatever works best for you. But I like to add that chain one right there to help my work lay flat. Flat. If you are working a different stitch, you would do the same thing, chain one right there to hop over. Or if you are noticing that you need, your work is still bunching, add another chain. But that seems to work out really well for me. And I hope that you see that. I hope that that looks good to you as well. But that is it. That's how I get over that join there to start joining this direction. And lastly, I wanted to show you if you were to use the slip stitch chain join method, how you would go about expanding from these joining these two granny squares to moving over to the next granny squares that you will join to this panel. And then I will show you how you will cross over using that same join method. All right. So 
looking at these two granny squares right now that we are joining with the slip stitch chain method, you will reach the end here. So I'm doing the skip one stitch and then slip stitch into the next. But I don't want to leave a big gap here to the next panel or to the next granny square. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close off this particular join before I go to the next. And what I mean by that is I will do my chain two because that's what I'm doing here. And then I know I already used this stitch and there's only one more stitch on this side because this chain is part of this side. But I'm just going to go into that very last stitch space to seal off this panel. Yarn over. Pull through. Pull through. Okay, so I will literally just end these two joins with a flat chain two slip stitch. Then I will take these two granny squares that I want to attach over and I'll chain two, one, two, and then I'll come to this side and I will slip stitch. And then I'll chain two, one, two, and I'll come to this corner and slip stitch. So underneath two loops. So corner, 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 slip stitch. And then I will continue the join. Chain two, skip one stitch, slip stitch, chain two, skip one stitch and slip stitch. So that is how I would go from these two joins or joining these two with the slip stitch chain method, adding two more panels on to complete this section. All right, so that's how I would do that. Now let's look at how we would then cross section using this join method. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. Let's pretend that we are working the slip stitch chain join method here. I've worked these two panels all the way along this side and now I'm starting to work the cross sections to join this way as well. So I'm working that slip stitch chain method. So one, two. I'm going to find the cornermost stitch here before I pass over this join and I'm going to close there. Slip stitch. Just like I did when I was finishing off these two and about to cross over to the next two. Want to make sure that it is a solid line there. Find the cornermost stitch of this one right here. Even if you're not able to skip a stitch to get to this stitch, you want to be right here. There we go. And slip stitch. So now I have completely finished the join for these two granny squares together here. I'm going to chain two, one, two. I'm going to hop over this join and find the diagonal chain here, the diagonal corner stitch. I'm going to slip stitch in that stitch. Chain two, one, two. And then I'm going to go to this granny square here and find the corner stitch for that one. There we go. I'm going to slip stitch in that one. And then I'm set up to continue doing the skip a stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch over pattern, joining these two granny squares. So chain two, one, two, skip a stitch, next stitch, slip stitch. So this is what that will look like. These colors are probably not the best colors, most flattering colors to utilize the stitch with but you get the idea of what it will look like if you were to use other colors. But here we have a cross there for that cross section, and then you would just continue working that pattern all the way across. That's it. Hope that made sense. <laughs>
Well, that's everything that I have found so far. If you know of any other joining stitches or joining methods that I did not mention, please put those in the comments below. I would love to hear. It's just very exciting to see different methods, different techniques, and different ways of doing something. I also tried to make sure this video was very comprehensive so that way if you have never joined granny, granny squares or even joined two pieces of crocheted work together, that you were able to figure out how to start how to stop, how to join, and even the crossover of when you're joining the other direction. Because often that is the most confusing part of the whole, the whole thing. So I really hope that I answered all your questions. If I missed anything, please mention it in the comment section below. Uh, ask the question or just if you saw that I missed something and you're like, ah, I would love to add something to this tutorial, just add it in the comment section below. I would love to hear and learn off of you as well. It's always such a learning experience, this whole thing, and I just appreciate it so much. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for crocheting with me. I hope you had fun. If you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. I hope you have the best day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.